Like, where in your life do you feel that you are most challenged? Like who is, is it a person? Is it a situation? Is it a part of your life that consistently brings out your reactive behavior? Jealousy, control, hatred, fear of some kind, fear of abandonment, fear that you're not good enough, uh, self-worth. I mean, these are all, this is all garbage. It's all baggage that our soul comes into the world that we must transform. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. Today, I have someone who is very near and dear to my heart, someone who I have learned a tremendous amount from over the past few years uh, since I started studying uh, spirituality under him. Uh, his name is David Guillaume, and I've watched him be a great father to four little kids while at the same time running an incredibly successful business while at the same time donating about half of his time to teaching spirituality and helping other people improve their lives. Uh, and I am one of those people as well as thousands or I would say tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, maybe coming up to millions of people who have been touched by David's work. So I'm so excited to have you on the line here today. Thank you, David, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. And yes, I, our relationship goes way back to the days we were just starting our businesses. So uh, love what you're doing and really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, David is a teacher of Kabbalah. Um, many people, uh, some of you may have heard of Kabbalah. You may not know exactly what it is, but we're going to talk about um, it's something that for me, when I took his Kabbalah one class, it was something where I saw people from all different types of religions, all different types of ethnicities, and these were just really amazing, uh, I don't know if you call them strategies or what you would call them uh, uh, of Kabbalah, but it's been, it's, been, it's been a game changer for me. Yeah, and, and I think it's important to acknowledge that you know, Kabbalah, when people hear the word Kabbalah, there's a lot of different uh, images and thoughts that come to their mind about what it is. And, and most likely, whatever a person thinks it is, it's very different than what they experience when they actually learn the wisdom. So what Kabbalah is, is it's universal spiritual wisdom that is the technology of the soul. And it pretty much explains all the universal laws of life. And from this wisdom actually has given birth all the religions that we know about and the spiritual paths and faiths. So whatever religious practice a person believes in or spiritual practice that they believe in, what they'll find when they learn Kabbalah is the universality that brings everything together and the why behind it. A lot of times people think that Kabbalah is just a Judaic study. It, while it is true that the, the Judaic faith has preserved this wisdom in the biggest way, as well as Kabbalah is the deeper secrets of the Old Testament, right? This wisdom originally came from Abraham, who was the father of all the major religions, but within what Abraham brought to this world was a spiritual practice. So that's spirituality of what he brought that eventually got passed down and helped create the different religions is called Kabbalah. So when a person studies Kabbalah, they're just learning the technology of life, how cause and effect works, how relationships work, what are the secrets behind human consciousness, what are the secrets behind why my soul came to this world, past lives, this life, um, how to reach my highest potential, how to handle challenges and pain. And uh, it's very profound because I think within just a couple of sessions of learning this wisdom, you're, the way you look at life completely changes. A hundred percent. I mean, everyone I know who has gone through Kabbalah One, your course, uh, has has been said what a game changer it is for them. And I think it actually applies to health, you know, quite a bit as well. Health, mental health, even physical 100%. health. Uh, I literally just finished listening to uh, an, an audio book called "The Biology of Belief" by Bruce Lipton. Um, very, very powerful book that talks about how our mind and our thoughts and our beliefs, uh, you know, affect our health, really, truly affect our health in, in real life. And um, yeah, so there's some amazing concepts uh, that I definitely want to get into and, and maybe touch on a couple that, that are some big game changers to give people a little teaser. Um, but sure. um, how do you how do you want to how do you how do you want to start this uh, conversation? Yeah, I think I think one is, you know, whoever's listening right now, you we all have something about our lives that is challenging. There's always some kind of pain that we're going through, and that is actually by design. There will always be one area of your life 
It is not going exactly the way you want because what that does, the universe designed it that way to push you to the greatest version of yourself. Because when things are good and I am satisfied in every way, the hunger leaves and a person stops asking questions. A person stops asking, what is life about? A person stops really asking how they can grow. Maybe superficially they do, but we know what it feels like when our back's up against the wall and we're in pain. We will do anything to get out of that pain. And what we're seeing more and more these days is people are looking to the, the spiritual side. Because what you're seeing in this physical world is just a shadow of what's happening in the spiritual. It's actually because of seeds you have planted by your consciousness, by your actions, by your energy, day, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, or years before. And many times what we're trying to do is change the shadow. We're trying to change the person in our life that is bothering us. We're trying to remove things that are bothering us. We're trying to make more money or um, get people's approval or fix things in this physical world. But what Kabbalah teaches us is that that is all, uh, I wouldn't want to say a waste of time, but we're actually just fighting a shadow. What we want to do is plant the seed on a, on a spiritual level. And how does that, how does that work? So I'll just give a little bit of a, a background. Kabbalah explains is that this entire universe, all of this started with a, a force that some people call God, some people call the creator, uh, some people just call energy. The Kabbalists call it the light of the creator, the light force of the creator. And what this light represents is all the fulfillment, all the abundance, all the happiness, joy, everything that we ever want is encapsulated in this light. So in the same way, for example, oh, the color white includes within it all the different colors of the spectrum. When you refract white through a prism, you see all the, like the rainbow of colors. The light of the creator includes all the colors of fulfillment. So a person is looking for their soulmate, a person is looking for, uh, for clarity of mind, they're looking for an answer to something, they're looking for love, they're looking for sustenance. Whatever it is that you're looking for, these are all colors of the light of the creator. So what does that mean? It means that we were created, the souls were created as what's called the vessel to receive this light. And if we connect with the light, darkness leaves. In the same way, if I come into a room, I turn on the physical light, the physical darkness disappears. We don't know where it goes. We just know the darkness disappears. Any challenge that we're facing in our lives, what we first need to ask ourselves is, how do I connect to that universal force of energy? And once I connect to it, then all the solutions will come. I will be guided in the right way. I'll be shown who to talk to. The solutions will come. But if I'm just looking for a solution in the physical world, without first stepping back and asking myself, how do I connect with the light? This is when people find themselves on the hamster wheel and keep finding the same challenges and the same problems in their lives. So that's the preface. How yeah. do I connect to this endless force? And all of Kabbalah is teaching us how to do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, for me personally, being less reactive and having more patience and, and specifically being less reactive, I think, is such a powerful thing that Kabbalah has, has taught me. Uh, and obviously it's still a work in progress, uh, but it's, but I've come a long way and it's, it's tremendously, tremendously helped me. And I think with regards to people's, you know, being reactive, think about when someone says something and you just react and you're angry or you have whatever, that's bad for your health. It's bad for the relationship. You usually regret it later. And so Kabbalah teaches us to pause and really be less reactive. And for me, that alone it would be a life-changing thing, uh, let alone everything else I've learned from Kabbalah. Uh, so let's unpack that because people are asking the question, like, what does it mean to be reactive? And why is that so bad? And, and why would that make my life better? So, and it's important not just for me to tell you, hey, do this and life will get great. I think there's a lot of people who do that. And I think that's great. I think that's inspirational. But I want to share with the people listening the why. I think when you know the why, you have more strength, more certainty, more conviction in executing the inspiration. So going back to this concept that there's the light of the creator and then there's the vessel, which is us, why wasn't it that when we were born, we just had all the light? If the light wants to share with us, well, why aren't we just born with everything fulfilled? Why are we born with emptiness? Why are we not born with knowing who our soulmate is? Why are we not born knowing what our purpose in life is and having financial freedom right away and just having complete certainty? Why do people have doubts and depression and sadness and anger? Why do we have all this darkness? 
And the simple understanding is that if we received this light for free, we would have what's called shame. And in order to avoid that shame, in the same way that a child, as he grows up, if his father bequeaths to him all his wealth, gives him the business, gives him all the money, gives him access to everything, we know what happens to children like that. They experience a type of shame because they didn't earn it. They were not co-creators. And they become incredibly destructive. They actually feel extremely dark, even though they have everything. They did not generate it. So in order to avoid that same situation, the soul's asked to come to a physical world of darkness, separate from all the fulfillment that it seeks, in order to earn and be co-creators to earn back that fulfillment. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? It says that the way you access the light, the way you earn the light, is by transforming whatever qualities you have that are unlike the light of the creator. Then, so what you just said, Talar, is what we learned, I think, Kabbalah 1 class 1, is that the creator is a proactive force, not a reactive force. Very simple. What does it mean to be reactive? The definition of reactive, and I want, I want as you're hearing this, as the, as the audience is hearing this, I want you to think in your life where you may have reactive behavior. It's any thought, word, or action that comes from lack or fear in order to connect with instant gratification. Mm. Thought, word, or action, this comes from lack or fear in order to connect with instant gratification. We hear something we don't like, immediately we have fear and lack, and the first thing we want to do is to get out of that fear and lack. We want to call someone, we want to fight, we want to be defensive, we want to run away, we want to not deal with the problem, but all of these are reactive actions just to numb ourselves for the moment. And it says if you do that at that moment, you disconnect from the light and you plunge yourself into chaos, further worsening the situation. However, every day, this light wants to be revealed in your life. Every day, true love wants to be revealed in your life. Every day, certainty, wealth, power, health, all of these energies want to come in to your life, but they can't until you earn it. So what the universe does is it sends you unique, sends us unique challenges that are designed perfectly to make us reactive, mm. to give us the opportunity to transform. Yeah. So if your child or your spouse or your colleague or someone is hurting you, bothering you, cheating on you, uh, failing you in some way, and, it, and it's awakening pain, this is all a test. The universe is sending you this test to give you the opportunity to act like the light. Now, well, what do I do about it? So there's a whole formula of how to transform reactive to proactive behavior. We can talk about it. But only after you transform from reactive to proactive, which, as you said, Tiller, it's pause. The first step is pause. Do not go to what you normally do. Do not go to old patterns of instant gratification. That pause right there turns on the light. First step. Mm. And then the light will show you and guide you what to do after that. But... We don't really know what happens after until we make the transformation. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful. And it's for me, so it, it's pause. And then what a pleasure is the next part uh, that I learned that, yeah. that has been very powerful for me as well, because it, it really helped me reframe my thinking around, you know, something happens, I get triggered. I want to, I want to yell or, or get angry or whatever it is, right? My, well, I don't want to, my initial instinct, my reactivity is, is wanting to do that. And then I can pause and then I can actually say, what a pleasure. And the way you described it uh, in Kabbalah one, uh, at least my understanding was we're not, not what a pleasure that this, you know, you give an example sometimes of like, oh, you get hit with a, with a big lawsuit or something in business, you know, and, and it's like, pause. What a pleasure, not what a pleasure that I got hit with this lawsuit. What a pleasure that the universe creator gave me this test that I now get to show that I can be like the light, not be reactive, overcome this test. And therefore, I pass the test and I show the universe that I'm ready for an even bigger challenge, potentially. A hundred percent. And not that necessarily a bigger challenge has to come. But right. when that challenge comes, we have to know it is an illusion. It, it is there for a second. And it will leave as soon as you become proactive. If you stay a victim, you are prolonging that process. And I remember like 
it could be something so simple as, I don't know, 10 years ago, I was playing basketball and I, f- and I came down from a jump and I turned my ankle. And I, as I fell to the ground, the first, the first thought that came to me is, oh, you know, here we go. I'm going to be out now for six months, whatever. I, you know, I don't even know what happened to my ankle now. But the second thought was, wait one second, pause. Mm-hmm. What a pleasure. And, as I'm, and, I, and I'm saying what a pleasure to my ankle. I'm saying what a pleasure to the universe. And I'm saying, look, this challenge, I have no idea why it came, but I at this moment want to act like the light of the creator. I want to, yes, acknowledge the pain. It is painful. I'm, I'm unhappy that it happened. It's, I wish it didn't happen. We're not denying that. But after you feel those feelings, you say, one second, if this happened, the creator wanted it to happen in order to strengthen me, to help me help give me the opportunity to reveal even more in my life. And I have complete certainty as a result, this is, this is good for me. And that's why we say, what a pleasure. What a pleasure that I get this opportunity now to go to my next level. And it's very hard to believe that because you don't see the next level. You don't see the pleasure. You don't see the fulfillment. But that's the test. Because if the creator could show you what's waiting for you after you pause, then it's not a test anymore, right? We, everybody would pause and everybody would just reveal miracles all day. So it has to be where... There's a doubt, but Kabbalah teaches us, if you continue to stay in that proactive consciousness, if you continue to handle the challenges proactively, eventually your whole life will change. Miracles will come on a daily basis. You'll be flooded with miracles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really, I can really, everything that David's saying, I, I just, I'm just smiling because I've, I've been experiencing it over the last few years and uh, it's made such an impact on my life. Another thing that I've really learned from you and Kabbalah, David, is about energy and how different things, different actions that you do and energy, even in one area of your life, could have an effect on a different area of your life, right? If someone is unfaithful to their spouse and then all of a sudden their business crashes, they shouldn't think that that's some sort of coincidence and has nothing to do with one another, right? right? Yeah. So one of the things we talk about is like, for example, if you're having problems in a certain part of your life, uh, sometimes what you should be doing is realizing that maybe there's some kind of reactive behavior in another part of your life. And all of these parts are like vessels, organs of one body. And sometimes if you're having challenges in your business and you're not sure what to do, maybe you look at the different categories of your life and ask yourself, where am I acting like, where, where do I have doubts? Where am I acting with reactive behavior? And Kabbalah one explains kind of like all the different ways that we are unlike the creator and the tools and the tips of what we need to do to transform. So I only shared one of them, which is the pause. But without a doubt, what we want to focus on is how to bring light into every category of our life. And each category affects another category. So sometimes you have problems and challenges with your kid. That could be because you have doubts in your business. So the fact that I have doubts or fears with my employees, or maybe I don't treat my employees well, or maybe I'm uh, stuck in a, in a career that I know I should be getting out of, but I'm afraid to. So I'm staying in my comfort zone, which is staying in my comfort zone is a form of reactive behavior. Uh, that negativity could be then falling, bleeding into my life with my children and causing the, the pain there. So they're all connected. It's all connected. And that's one of the things that we learned that's very quantum. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've like I want to ask, mm-hmm. I want to ask actually practically like for, for everyone who's listening, like where in your life do you feel that you are most challenged? Like who is, is it a person? Is it a situation? Is it a part of your life that consistently brings out your reactive behavior? Jealousy, control, hatred, fear of some kind, fear of abandonment, um, fear that you're not good enough, uh, self-worth. I mean, these are all this is all garbage. It's all baggage that our soul comes into the world that we must transform. So there's probably an area or a situation that is keep, keeps poking at that garbage to push us to transform it and not point the finger at somebody else because then you'll just keep repeating this loop and you'll have to come back lifetime after lifetime to fix it. Mm-hmm. What, you know, what, 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 what is that for each one of us? And can today be the day that I say, I'm taking 100% responsibility because I want to be a vessel of the light of the creator. It's not about other people. Other people who did you wrong, they were forced to do that. 
it. Your soul actually asked for those people to come and hurt you, to give you the opportunity to transform. It's very much like when a dentist, you go see a dentist and there's a cavity and there's a pain in the tooth. So he's touching that tooth and it's very painful. So you scream at the dentist and you say, listen, why do you keep bothering me? Like, why do you keep touching that tooth? And he said, well, we need to, we need to fix it. And you said, well, look, I would appreciate if you only focused on the healthy teeth and not keep poking the one that's painful. And no one's going to a dentist and yelling at the dentist to just focus on the healthy teeth. So in relationships in our own lives, they are programmed from the universe to touch the cavity in the soul. And it's very painful. It's very difficult sometimes to hear that, especially from a spouse or a, or a partner of some sort. It's, the ego doesn't want to hear it. The gar our garbage doesn't want to hear it. But if you transform it, ah, then the light comes in. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so many times people will are so quick to blame others or think that it's, oh, it's this person in my life. They're the problem or, or, you know, oh, my, my, my spouse is not acting the way I want them to do. So, you know, maybe I should just, you know, go find someone else or something like that. And I think it's, that's one of the things I've learned through Kabbalah is that like, you have to take full responsibility. You have to be the, you know, understand that you are the, you are a cause and you're responsible and, and that, you know, most likely if you're running away and go to another relationship because you feel like it's the other person's without doing any work on yourself, you're just going to end up in another relationship that's going to end up the same way as this one. So um, chasing things outside yourself without working on yourself is not, is not really the answer. And then, that, yeah, and that to be clear, you know, sometimes we are meant to move on to new relationships and mm -hmm. sometimes our job is done with the person that we're with. And that is actually very common. However, what you're saying is so beautiful because before you do leave, are you leaving having fully taken responsibility for what has happened? Have you fully looked deep down inside yourself? What Kabbalah helps us do. It says, what is my correction? What is my soul's correction that came up and have I fully transformed it? Have I fully dealt with it? Am I leaving now because I don't want to deal with this stuff anymore? Or am I leaving because, hey, we've we already done our correction together. I, I don't feel there's anything left and we don't have a soul connection anymore. And it's time to move on. So it is very important not to leave a relationship, leave a career, leave a city, leave any situation because you're sick and tired of it or it's bothering you so much you don't want to deal with it anymore. Quite the opposite. You should leave on a high note. You should leave after. It's amazing now. Now it's amazing, but I, I don't feel there's a deep connection. I don't feel like we're meant to be in this situation. Not because I'm running away from something. And this is very important. Otherwise, you will be dragged back there. You will be dragged back into the situation. It might happen a week later, a month later, years later. But we don't want to come back to that. Yeah. You know, I'll share, I'll share with you another concept that we learned in Kabbalah 1 about how to act like the creator. Every time we have doubt, every time we have doubts, we are disconnecting from the endless light. We're disconnecting from this source of all good. Doubts. What are doubts? Doubts that maybe I'm not meant to receive. Doubts that I'm going to lose what I have or I'll never get what I want. Doubts and anxiety about people we love and worrying about them all the time. Doubts and anxiety about, will I ever make enough money? Or maybe I have money and people will take it away from me or I'm going to lose it, right? All this, if you really look at your day, how much of your day has doubts and fear and anxiety? And do you allow those thoughts to fester? When you're in a state of consciousness of doubt, the light of the creator cannot rest on you. So you're not in a place of miracles. You're not in a place of blessings. Blessings attract blessings. Lack attracts lack. And I, I know I was talking to a parent recently, and the parents always worried about their child. Always worried. Is the child going to get married? Is the child going to make this? Child that? And this constant state of worry and anxiety about her child is the very thing that's attracting chaos into her life. Because what is the energy she's putting out there in the world? Well, what does she need to transform that to? And through Kabbalah, she would learn, hey, I'm not... Me worrying about my child is bringing darkness to him and to me because I'm not acting like the creator. How do I transform doubt into certainty? So instead she'll say, even though I don't know, I have certainty that my son will be happy. Even though I don't know, I have certainty that he will fulfill his life's mission. Even though I don't know how or what, I have certainty that he's living his highest good. And that certainty, that feeling of, I have everything already. 
I don't need to be controlling him or life in any way. That vibration is actually what elevates the sun to reach those miracles and for her to be happy. So for all of us, we have to stop the doubts. We have to work to transforming the fear. And if you're working on something anyways, trying to fix it, fix it with certainty as opposed to anxiety. Invest in it with certainty instead of, instead of worrying all the time if you're doing the right thing or not. And plus, if you've already made a decision to, to invest in something or do something, just do it with all your heart. Oh, but what if it's wrong? You can't, that, that ship is sailed. You can't unring that bell. You have committed. Now commit to it all the way with positive consciousness. And even if you chose the wrong thing, the light will help you make it right as long as you act like the light through the process. Mm. Mm, yeah. One thing, one thing you said that will, oh, I'll always remember this. This will stick with me for my whole life. Uh, don't do what you feel like doing, do what you know is right. Right. And, mm -hmm. and thinking about what, what would God do? How can I act, you know, how, what would God do in this situation? How can I be more yeah. like the light? You know, don't do what you feel like doing, do what you know is right. Right. These yeah. are amazing concepts. Very powerful concepts. And one of the, one of the sessions I talk about, how actually religion is, has kind of made the concept of prayer, uh, you know, such a, such a distasteful thing. And prayer is really just one thing. It's a request that builds a vessel for energy. It's not about appeasing the creator. The creator is not some man in the sky that's pulling strings that we're just like, we have to pay homage to it. That's nonsense. The creator is just energy. It's like the electricity in the wall. If I stick my finger in the socket and I get electrocuted, I can't say that the energy punished me. And if I plug my laptop in and I, into the socket and I can now do a podcast with you, I'm not going to say that the electricity rewarded me. The, the energy is there. I just have to learn how to connect to it or, di or, or, or disconnect from it, right? That's my, that's my free will. Yeah. So prayer is really a, a request. That's all it is. It's a request. So one of the things that I do is I request out to the energy. And by this request, the energy can come in. I say, well, what does my soul really need and want? Not what do, I, what do I want? Because what I want, it could be very reactive. It could be very selfish. It could just be my comfort zone. What does my soul want? And I ask the universe to help me and guide me to what my soul wants. Like I'm open. I'm genuinely, I tell you, I'm genuinely open, even if I don't like the answer. What does my soul want and need? Not what I think I want and need. And that let go. That let go is so powerful because now you're really open. And when you're open, I mean, how, how great is it to have a friend who's open? How great is it to be with a spouse that's open? And how toxic and draining is it to be with someone who's closed? So we need to be that for the universal energy. We need to be that for the creator. We need to be open and say, listen, maybe I don't know what's right for me. Guide me every day. I mean, every day I'll do my best and with whatever knowledge I have, I'll move forward and I'll move forward with strength. But I'm open. I'm open to not being right. And please show me my soul's purpose. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. So powerful, man. Um, I highly recommend everyone go check out David's Kabbalah One course. For me, it has had the biggest impact out of any kind of course, seminar, you know, training, whatever you want to, you know, whatever you want to call it. Over the past few years, this has had the biggest impact on my life. Um, David, is KabbalahOne.com, O-N-E, Kabbalah? Yeah, so it's K-A-B-B. A L A H O N E dot com. And um, all the proceeds of Kabbalah go to charity. It's actually a master class that was created from one of my live seminars and really well done. An on demand uh, course that teaches you all the secrets of life. I, I'm, I'm hearing daily dozens of people, kind of everyday people, you know, we have people signing up every day and they're messaging me and saying, my life has changed. Usually within the first two or three sessions, you're, you will never look at life the same. And even if you've gone to Tony Robbins and Joe Dispenza and, and all these different spiritual retreats and stuff, which are so powerful, you, you, Kabbalah will bring it all together in such a powerful, practical, systematic way that you'll be able to use on a daily basis. And it's just a few hours the shift will occur. So 100%. Like, I'm so excited to, to talk about this. I, I go all around the world. I've given over a thousand seminars on this. And I, I just want people to connect with this because I know as soon as they do, 
they will be better Christians, they will be better Catholics, they'll be better Jews, they'll be better Muslims, they'll be better Buddhists. Like I have people from every religion coming to me and saying, now I understand my religion better. Now I understand the creator better. I, I give these lectures and seminars in churches all around the all around the US. I opened up a study group in the Philippines, which is 95% Catholic country. And this is huge groups of people that are learning this wisdom that it's so powerful for them. It, it's interesting because even the, the Catholic Pope and, and, and a lot of the people in the higher clergy are studying this wisdom, obviously confidentially, but they have these books and they're studying from the Zohar and they're studying this wisdom because it's clarifying their religion. It's clarifying it. So it's a very powerful thing and I highly recommend that your life will change. I highly recommend it as well. My life has changed. Thank you so much, David, for sharing your wisdom. Uh, you know, and, and you know, David's been teaching Kabbalah since I think since you were 18 years old, right? Yeah, I started studying at 15 and I graduated from UCLA around 19. And then I started going on tour, just teaching for a nonprofit um, 24 hours a day. This is like all I did traveling the world, just giving seminars on this until we built Mary Roots. And then my time was split between the two. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, that's one thing too, like, I mean, think about the faith and the certainty that David had to have, you know, donating all his time, you know, and uh, back then, but, but having certainty and faith that, you know, he would still be able to, you know, achieve wealth and, and, and other things like that, you know, and for me too, it's, it's, I've really been focused now, like, how can I give back more, right? I almost feel like, I almost feel like in my mind, the best thing I can do for my business is to help more people even outside right. of my business or inside the business, either way, right? Like just to help more people, be more like the light, inspire more people. And you've inspired me to do that, uh, David. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thank you, everyone. You're in, you're in good hands with Talara. And I appreciate that you have uh, allowed me to be a guest on your podcast. Thank you, everyone. Check out Kabbalah1.com and uh, buy the course. It's extremely affordable. It's not some of these super high-priced ones. Uh, that not even have... close. Not even yeah. close. It's a few exactly. dollars a session, I think. <laughs> yeah, the most affordable and, and the most impactful. Uh, so don't let the, don't let the low price uh, fool you. Uh, it is e extremely impactful. Uh, so go check out Kabbalah1.com. It will change your life. So David, thank you so much and uh, hope to see you again soon. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, can you please leave us a rating or review and subscribe? I've realized that while we have actually increased our downloads a lot, we're actually getting a lot of downloads, which I'm really happy about. We actually have very few ratings. So, and I realized that I've never asked people really to rate much. So I'm asking you now, if you could please rate and review and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to anyone that you think will get value out of this. Also, if you haven't checked out our line of products at buypeakperformance.com, you get 20% off your first order. That's www.buybypeakperformance.com. Com. We have some incredible products, including our organic high altitude coffee. If you don't know this, coffee is one of the most heavily sprayed with pesticides out of any crop. So it's really important that you drink organic coffee. We've gone above and beyond to source what we believe is the highest quality and healthiest organic coffee in the world. We're also famous for our organic green superfood powder. You can get 20% off of that as well at buypeakperformance.com. We also have an organic vegan and paleo plant protein. See, most of the vegan proteins out there are using brown rice protein, which is really not a good source of protein, and it's also a grain. And if you're paleo, you know that grains tend to cause inflammation in some cases for some people. And so we wanted to make one that was paleo-friendly and vegan and organic. We made an amazing amino acid profile, so it's really one of the best plant proteins for muscle building. So you can check out Peak Performance Organic Plant Protein. You can find that on our website. Of course, all our products are on Amazon as well. So thanks again. And again, please, if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to someone who you feel can get value out of it. And please leave us a rating, review, and subscribe. Thank you.